Hey there my flow designers and creatives hope you're all doing well welcome to a brand new webflow tutorial on my channel today we're going to look at recreating the most popular scroll effect that we see on apple's websites i'm sure all of you have seen it and so i'm going to show you how to recreate this using webflow using after effects and using lottie files i'm going to show you every single step in order to achieve this effect so without any further ado let's get started now um, i'm going to quickly show you how the effect looks like and, and i'm going to give you an intro of how this is working so this is the Apple Watch Series 8 uh, website. And as I scroll, uh, you can see that the image is sort of animating as I scroll, all right? So as you can see, I'm scrolling down and then I'm scrolling up again, okay? There you go. And uh, then we sort of see the watch and I'm scrolling again and then the watch comes in. So if I scroll down, um, the animation is working and it is the direction is changing depending on my scroll direction as well, right? So this is how it is on the Apple Watch uh, Series 8. Now there's another website called as frame.io, all right? And I can just come over here to the beginning and uh, it's, it's frame.io. It's a product uh, that was acquired by Adobe. And here also they have a very similar effect, right? I'm gonna show you that right now. So over here, you can see you have this camera and uh, as you can see, as I scroll, it just zooms in quite well. I can zoom out, I can zoom in again. Uh, it's going through the camera lens and it's uh, pretty cool. And even this part as well, um, there's this video editor who comes into the picture and if I can zoom back in, um, it sort of reverses the animation, right? Um, all right, there we go. And then the text com comes in, all right? Now, um, here's another example. This is one of my websites. Uh, if you want to learn product design the right way and become an industry standard product designer, highly recommend you check this out. I've applied that effect here as well. So if I scroll down, you can see that here is the effect where I say match the industry standard by learning um, with a non-nonsense and practical framework, right? As you can see, there's a scroll bar over here, which you can see. And as I scrolling up and down, I am triggering this animation. Um, this is not text. This is not a text layer. It's a Lottie file. I'm gonna explain all of that in a second. So um, as you can see over here, and then, you know, we have the rest of the information, which is basically a text element, right? So this thing is very similar to what we saw over here in frame.io and uh, what we also saw over here in Apple's website. Okay, so this is the effect that we want to create. Now, let's jump into After Effects and see how this is done. So here I'm in After Effects. Now, what you ideally want is a video file, okay? Now, in this case, I created a text animation, all right? So here is the simple text animation. And as you can see, all of these are individual text layers. I have animated it, I've added effects, I've added blurs, I've done every single thing that I want, right? You can go crazy and do whatever animation you want. In the end, it has to be a video file. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, created this animation in After Effects. This is completely native. All of these are individual text elements. I can change the effects. I can do whatever I want. Now, coming here to Apple's example, right? This is actually a video, right? So this was created somewhere, right? Um, maybe this was created in After Effects, maybe whatever this was, but this was initially made as a video file, right? Same here with frame.io. This was actually a video file. Maybe this was made in Premiere Pro. Maybe this was made in Cinema 4D. It doesn't matter. Right? So similarly, whatever tool you're using or whatever it is, you just need a video file. Now, what I have done is rather than rendering this out as a video, I have rendered this out as a PNG sequence. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and render this out. So you want to add to render queue. And once you come over here, you wanna to go to output module. And here you want to choose a PNG sequence and come down here to channels. And you wanna choose RGB plus alpha. if you want a transparent background, right? In this case, in frame.io, there was no transparent background. This was because this was like a video. And even coming here down to Apple's example, this is again um, a video. There's no transparent background over here um, because as you can see over here, there's this earth and all of those things. So it's not really a transparent background. But in my case over here, I wanted to make sure that the background color would be the same uh, everywhere. So this was a transparent layer, right? now. In order to explain what that even means, I can come down over here to the main settings and I can uh, toggle this one on which says transparency. And as you can see, it's a transparent background and there's only text. Now, if you don't have a transparent background, it's fine. You don't have to come over here and uh, let's, let's change that back to PNG sequence. If you don't have a transparent background, you don't have to choose this. If you have a transparent background, I recommend you choose this, all right? Now, once you do this, uh, RGB plus alpha, you want to go ahead and click on OK, and then you want to render out this entire thing. Obviously, you want to choose uh, where you want to deposit and then go ahead and render it out. 
Okay, now once you render it out, you want to import it into After Effects. So just double click and import all the uh, PNG sequence layers as you can see over here. I've gone ahead and imported it. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to select all of them. Uh, just go ahead and uh, whoops, select all of them. And once you do that, you want to come over here and drag all of that and throw that into a new composition. Okay, now once you do that, you want to change a couple of settings. Now use dimensions from, obviously all of these are going to be the same dimensions. And in my case, I have chosen 1920 by 1080. You can choose whatever dimension you want, whatever you feel is comfortable. Okay, I've chosen the normal video format. All right, you want to choose sequence layers. Uh, you don't want to set overlap, just check on sequence layer and you want to set the still duration to one. So basically what it's going to say is that it's going to sequence the layer with a gap of one frame. Not, not so what this means is that it's going to sequence the layer with each frame, each of this frame is going to be one frame long, right? So what this means is that it's going to sequence all of these images, right? This is a PNG layer. It's going to sequence all of these PNG layers um, and the size or the duration of every PNG layer is going to be one frame, right? So you want to go ahead and click on OK. Once you do that, um, you're going to see something that looks like this, all right? And as you can see, I have all the PNG sequence layers over here, okay? And uh, they're all spaced out one frame later. And then this is basically the animation. Now, all of this is a image layer. It's a PNG layer, as you see over here. And it's still transparent. As you can see, you can see the background, okay? Now, once you have something that looks like this, you then want to go ahead and install Lottie. Now, if you don't know what Lottie is, you can come down to my YouTube channel and I've created a course on everything that you need to know about Lottie. So it comes down to int uh, introduction to Lottie files, importing them from Figma, animating them from After Effects, creating some super cool, fun animations, expressions, um, exporting the Lottie plugin, how to use images and a bunch of things, right? There's a lot of things that you can do. So I highly recommend that check out this small free course if you're interested in learning more about Lottie. Anyway, what you need to do is go to the Lottie Files website and download the Lottie Files plugin. The instructions are qu quite simple. I leave a link down below in the description for you to go to the website and get everything. And once you install it in After Effects, you want to come down here to um, view. You want to go down to window, I guess. Then you want to go to extensions. And here you want to choose Lottie Files. Okay. Now it's going to ask you to log in, create an account and all of those things. And once you're done that, you can go ahead and click on this button, right? Now I'm not going to click on this button because the moment I click on it, it's going to start rendering out everything. And it's actually going to take a significant amount of time. So give yourself, you know, 15 to 20 minutes for it to actually render it out. And once you do that, you can export it as a .json file. Okay, it's important to export it as a .json file. Now, I'm not going to show you that because the moment I click on it, it's going to go crazy and it's going to just uh, take up all the RAM and it's going to mess everything up for me right now. So I'm not going to do it, but you can do it once you're ready to export. All right. Now, once you have exported it, you're going to get a .json file. And what you want to do is you want to take that .json file and you want to import that into the Lottie Files dashboard, right? So if you can come down here, if I can come here to my dashboard, you can see I have all these animations and this is the animation that I had uh, imported so I can click on it, all right? So this is the Lottie File animation. What you want to do is you want to come down here to download and export and you're going to find an option here the, which says the optimized Lottie JSON and that is going to reduce it as you can see from 23 MB to 9.3 MB. Right? So what you want to do is you want to try to reduce the size of that JSON file as much as you can. And then you want to go ahead and download the compressed or optimized JSON file. Okay. Now, once that is done, we can then go to Webflow and then add the animation. All right. Now, before I go to Webflow, let me explain how this animation actually works. Let me explain this visually before building it in Webflow. Now, what we ideally need to understand is that the animation is triggered based on scroll, which means we need a lot of scroll area for the animation to work. Now, as you can see, I have this one section or a div block, all right, which is quite long in nature, right? This is going to be my scroll area, okay? So I'm going to start off from here and as I keep scrolling, this thing keeps moving upwards, all right? Now, what we also want to do is we want to create this container which has all the information that we want. So, the first thing is that I'm going to first create a container like this and the black part is actually the container, all right? The black part is the container and the height of the container is going to be 100 VH, right? 
what does that actually mean? So here in frame.io, you can see that the entire video is taking up the whole height of the screen that I have. Now, in order to demonstrate that a little bit better, if I go down to inspect element, okay, and uh, let me just go down over here. If I reduce the height of this, all right, all right, and if I just increase and decrease the height of it, you can see that the image is taking up as much height as is available. Now, that can be anything you want. So if I make it sh even shorter, you can see that it's going to adapt very well uh, and it's going to fit. Maybe we can bring in this guy, all right, and I'm going to increase this. It's going to take a second to refresh and you can see that it gets adapted to the height of this, all right? So that's why we want it to be 100 VH. Okay, so now coming down to Figma, what I've done here, this black area you see is the viewport height and it's going to be 100 VH. And inside this, you can put whatever you want. In this case, I have put in this uh, Lottie file, all right? Now, the, now, because the height of this can increase or decrease depending on the height of your screen, there are multiple things that you can do with this Lottie file. Now, one thing is that you can ensure that the Lottie file is always in the center with the ratio maintained. Or what you can do is you can choose to expand it, all right? and make sure that the sides are getting cut off, but the height is maintained. Or you can also make sure that you can make it a little bit smaller if you want. Now it's up to you to decide what is the effect that you want. Now in frame.io and Apple website, what they ideally did was even though the video was in this ratio, they decided to make sure that whatever the video is, it, the height should be the same of the viewport height. All right, so in my case, what I've done, is since I don't have a transparent background, I just made sure that the width of it would be the same. And this is going to be in the center of this container that we have. And of course, this is gonna be a lot more clear when I build this in Webflow. And as I scroll, what's going to happen is this section, as you can see, now this is the viewport, right? This is what I can see, all right? This section is going to keep scrolling. Uh, let me try that again, all right? Uh, actually, let me try this again, let's bring it out. Right, this section is going to keep scrolling, but this thing that you see over here is going to stick to the top of the screen, and this lotty area is going to start animating as I keep scrolling. All right, so I'm going to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll until it reaches the bottom, and once it reaches the bottom, the next section becomes visible. Right, so this is the whole concept of how it works. So now let's go to Webflow and try to recreate this. So now here I am in Webflow. Now what I have, I've just created two div blocks. Assume that this is just some random piece of content. All right, so this has a height of 100 VH. All right, um, this can be whatever it is, right? This can be even let's say 80 VH. And this can also probably be like, you know, 80 VH. Right? I've just taken 100 as an example, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this back to 100 and 100. Um, both of these can be whatever the height they want, right? Now in between this is where I'm going to go ahead and add the Lottie animation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, add, press Command E or Control E, and I'm going to add in a section. Okay, and this section obviously is going to be in between these two. Okay, so we have the first div block. Let's actually do this. Yeah, so we have the this div block, and then here we have the section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call this Lottie section. Okay, and here we have the other one. Okay, now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and set a ridiculous height of 500 VH, okay? Now, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually set the width of this to 100%, okay? And the height of this to be 500 VH. Now, the reason I'm setting 500 is because I want it to actually scroll a lot. Now, this will totally depend on you. In your case, depending on the speed of scroll that you want, depending on how long the animation is, you might want to play around with this number. Now, I have chosen 500 after doing a lot of trial and error of testing things. But for beginning, you can just choose 500 or maybe even 300 or 400 or even maybe even 1000 if you want, right? But start with something where you have a lot of scroll area. Okay, perfect. Now. Inside this section, I'm gonna go ahead and add a div, okay? I'm gonna go call this the Lottie container. Now this Lottie container is going to contain everything, okay? Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give this some sort of a color so we can differentiate things, 
Okay, so I'm going to come down here to the color section to the background. I'm going to go ahead and choose black. Okay, so now let's just assume that this is what we have. So if I go ahead and preview what we have here, uh, actually, let me just let me just give it a random height for now. Let's, let me just give it like, you know, uh, 500 pixel, right? Just some random height for now to explain what's happening. So uh, we have this. And then as I scroll, uh, we have this black container, which is inside the section. All right. And then we have 500 VH worth of scroll. And then we get the next section. All right. And as you can see over here, the Lottie container is inside the Lottie section. Now, what we want are two things. This Lottie container, I actually want this, all right, to be 100 VH, as I had mentioned before. Okay. And as you can see over here, now what's going to happen is I get this. Okay. Uh, I see this. This is going to be 100 VH. As you can see, now it's taking up the entire screen space. And then we have the rest 400 VH, right? This entire white area is 400 VH. As you can see, I'm still scrolling over here on the side. All right. And, but it's still white. And after scrolling 400, I get to see the uh, next set of content. Okay. Now, the next thing that we want to do is what I want is I want to scroll this. All right. And the moment it hits the top, I want this to stick. I don't want to see this white section anymore. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this Lottie container. Okay, I'm going to come down here to position and I'm going to set that to sticky. And once I set it to sticky, I need to set a value and I'm going to go to the top section and set that to zero. What that means is the logic is that this Lottie container is going to stick once it hits zero pixels from the top of the screen. Okay, now let me go ahead and set this to 100 pixels for example, and show you what's going to happen. Now, as I scroll, you can see that this container started sticking after it hit a value of 100 pixels from the top. And you can see this white thing is also in the background. All right. And now that white thing is going to go and go. And as you can see here on the right side, the scroll bar, it's going to scroll 400. And then finally, once it finishes 400, it's going to show the next part. Right. So what we want to do is we want to set this to zero. We want to set the stickiness to zero. Okay. Now, once we have this, uh, it's actually this. Once you have this, you can now go in and add your Lottie file. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and press command D. I'm going to search for Lottie. I'm say Lottie animation. Now here, as you can see, we have the Lottie animation. Now I'm going to go ahead and play this. All right. And let's go from the beginning. So we have this, all right. Then we have the Lottie animation, which is inside the container, all right. And uh, as you can see, it sticks to the top, all right. And I, as you can see, I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And then once it's over, I can see the rest of it. Okay, perfect. Now here, what I'm going to do is, let me, sorry, uh, let me say that again. Let's go ahead and uh, get the navigation bar. Okay. Now, obviously you want to go ahead and import the Lottie file. So I'm going to go ahead and import the Lottie file. All right, so now I've imported the Lottie animation, all right? And I'm going to click on this settings icon and then I can choose replace Lottie sequence and then I can click on this, okay? So now we have this. Now there are a couple of options over here. You have SVG versus canvas. Now I have seen that the best is to uh, put it in canvas, all right? I think that sort of renders out a little bit bit better. I don't understand the technicalities behind it, but second, setting it to canvas is the better option. You can choose to play it in reverse or loop if you want. And I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to make sure uh, to keep it as, as it is built in the keep in the built in duration. And you can also click to preview the animation. So you can see the animation is a sort of uh, being previewed. All right, that is good. Uh, all right, that is uh, looking pretty good. Okay. Now, I'm going to come over here to the beginning. And let's see what happens. So when I come over here, you can see that the animation already started. The animation had already started, all right? But you can see that this is not really in the center of the screen, all right? In order to make this a little bit better, I'm going to come over here and I'm obviously going to call it the Lottie, uh, I'm just going to call it Lottie, okay? And I'm also going to add a background so we can see a little bit of a difference, all right? So I'm going to go add some sort of a, you know, some sort of like a green background as you can see over here. And now let me play this. And now you can see what's actually happening, right? The Lottie animation, is being played, all right, but it's not in the center of this area, right? It's on the top, right? You can see this gap over here, okay? So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to select the Lottie container, okay? And I'm going to come over here to the display section and I'm going to choose horizontal middle and justify middle, okay? So now as you can see over here, this Lottie animation is in the center, okay? So if I go ahead and play this, all right? Uh, let me let me play that again. Let me click over here and I'm going to play this, right? And you can see over here, this is uh, what we have. Now, this definitely is not what we want. We want things to be a bit better. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Lottie and I'm going to go ahead and set that to 100%. So now the width is going to be 100% of this container that we see over here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and play that again. There we go. And now you can see that the width is 100% and it is playing perfectly. All right. It's, it's, it's great. Now, the problem is if you sort of see over here, uh, let me set this to loop so we can actually see it better. Okay. Let's set this to loop. All right. You can see over here that the animation sort of gets cut over here. You know, you can see that the animation is sort of getting cut. All right. If you could pay attention, right. The animation is not starting from the edge. It's starting over here. Now, the, re the way to fix it is if you are actually facing this problem, you can come over here and set it back to SVG. Okay. And once you set it to SVG, now you can see that the animation starts right from the edge, right? Which is exactly uh, what we want. And that is perfect. All right. And you can see that there's a little bit less more space over here. And I can keep scrolling. As you can see, I'm still scrolling over here. All right. And after I finish 500 pixels, 500 VH of scrolling, um, I get to see the next section. Okay, so now with this in place, we can now go ahead and trigger the scroll animation. So what you want to do is you want to select the Lottie section. Make sure to select the section. You want to come down here to the interactions tab. And here in element trigger, you want to choose while this element, while the section, while the Lottie section is scrolling in view, do something. All right, so I'm going to click on that and choose, choose action. You want to choose play scroll animation, all right? And now you want to click on plus, okay? And I'm going to just call this Lottie animation. Once you create that, you want to come here and now select the Lottie uh, layer here, okay? Then you want to go down to plus and once you select that layer, you can see something called as integrations and you want to go ahead and click on Lottie, okay? Great. Now, what you want to do is you want to come down here and here in the Lottie, you want to set the first part to be 0%, okay? And you want to come on 100 and you want to set that to 100%. And once you set that, you can see that the exclamation mark goes away. So now what we can also do is I can turn on live preview so we can see how this functions, right? So I'm going to come over here and I'm in the beginning or maybe let's actually just come over here, uh, preview this. And as I scroll, you can see that the animation is now working. Okay, you can see that the animation is not working. But the problem is that this animation is already started even before I can actually see it, right? Like I sort of want to see this part sort of flying in, right? So what do I do? All you have to do, all right, is you want to take this and move this a couple of percentages front. So maybe I'm going to choose something like eight, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and play that again. Okay. So now, because it's starting a little late, I can now see the animation sort of flying in. All right. And this is something that you have to play around with. If you want it to come a little bit later, you can increase that to maybe 10%. All right. And let's play that again. All right. And after a while, it comes in. Now, this is something that you have to judge depending on how your website is built. All right. So it comes down over here and then all the way down over here and then I go all the way towards the end, all right, and over here, okay? And then you scroll to the end. Now, something that I usually like to do is I also like to move this down also a little bit. So I move it down to like, you know, 92% and I'm going to move this back to like uh, 8%, all right? And uh, so let's play that again. So it starts as I scroll over here, I can see the animation fading in. All right, I'm going to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And as the animation is ending, right, even before the animation sort of ends, all right, the page starts finishing and I can still see a little bit of the animation over here. All right, as you can see, it's fading off as I go. All right, so now that feels very natural to me. All right, and as you can see, it now slowly fades in and then the next part of text can sort of animate in or whatever is the next thing. 
So that's how you create the Lottie animation using After Effects, Webflow, and Lottie. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.